Well, this Saturday marks 40 years since the Pan Am Flight 759 crashed into a Kinner neighborhood. That day, 154 people, 146 on the plane, and eight people who lived on the ground in that neighborhood were all killed. In this morning's Throwback Thursday segment, we want to show you a story we did back in 2014 with a man who was the last person to talk to the plane's pilot. Here's Dennis Waltering. It was like a, a bomb had landed in the middle of our city. It was 1982. The tragic explosion and fire from the crash of Pan Am Flight 759 taking the lives of 154 people seconds after takeoff from New Orleans International. You couldn't believe what you were seeing and I just said, oh my God. You're looking at the last person to talk to the pilots of Flight 759 before the airliner crashed to the ground. I, you know, I issued a misclearance. Uh, the weather was deteriorating. Uh, there were uh, thunderstorms. Just moments before the crash, David Baldwin was the air traffic controller at New Orleans International on the radio with the pilots. And as a thunderous rainstorm pounded down, they discussed the threatening weather. He asked uh, the control tower, um, you know, what's your current winds? And when we issued to him, the very worst of it is passing directly overhead right now. Winds are all quadrants. He says the decision to take off or not was up to the pilot. And the aircraft, uh, the pilot elected to go. And that is the pilot's prerogative. Baldwin says he was talking to the Houston Center meteorologist as the airliner made what he describes as a flat takeoff. I'm watching him and I'm like going, oh my God, I'm, you know, in my mind I'm going, this, is this guy going to make it? And all of a sudden, bam, there's the fireball, there's the smoke. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. On the ground, it was devastation. The crash scene stretching three blocks long, two blocks wide. Houses obliterated, eight people in the neighborhood killed. And yet seconds after seeing the crash from the air traffic control tower, Baldwin says no one can believe or wants to believe what they just saw. One of his colleagues even tries to radio the pilots. He goes, Clipper 759 tower, your brain did not want to process the fact that this aircraft had just crashed in a thunderstorm, mm -hmm. even though it's obvious that it has. In those days, the media were not cordoned off away from the crash scene. We reported live from the midst of the charred, smoking rubble. And as a reporter on the scene back then, I remember having trouble coming to terms with all of the horror that surrounded us. 30 years after the crash, former Kenner Fire Chief Mike Zito says he had the same difficulty as a young firefighter responding to the tragedy. It was terrible. We saw families together still in seats. And in the air traffic control tower, Baldwin says there was a stunned, chilling silence as the magnitude of the crash hit everyone like a body blow they could never forget. I just saw 154 people get killed. I think that moment I carried for my entire FAA career. I think that came into play about everything I ever did. And he says it left him with all kinds of questions. I found myself questioning everything about everything that we did. Did we do everything proper? Absolutely we did. The federal investigation revealed that a dangerous microburst of wind shear had slammed Flight 759 to the ground as the plane was just lifting off from the runway. Wind shear in this scenario was a column of air a column of air descending out of a thunderstorm and going in every direction. The crash led to more research, a better understanding of the danger of wind shear. And it led to the installation of wind shear detection devices at airports across the country. It's hard to think of anything that good that came out of that, but countless lives have been saved worldwide because of that Pan Am crash. And that affected so many lives uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Kenner and uh, so many people. There were three survivors uh, uh, right, after, right after the plane crashed. Uh, uh, three people walked out of Chris Schultz's home, his wife, uh, his daughter Rachel, and uh, Rachel's friend Lisa Bai. Lisa Bai died at the hospital that night. Rachel and uh, Barbara survived. Uh, Barbara passed away several years ago, and then uh, several hours after the crash, when they were going through the rubble, uh, they did find a little 16-month-old baby, uh, Melissa Trahan. Uh, she was under a mattress. Uh, her mother and sister were both killed, mm. but she was found alive. She is now uh, married and a mom, and we'll be talking to uh, Mayor 
former mayor, uh, Kenner Mayor Aaron Broussard, tomorrow about this. He was only nine days into his first term wow. when this crash happened, and it, it, he is still shaken 40 years later. What about that little girl's dad? Was he at work or something? Was he alive? He was at work. He was wow. coming home. Um, so, but he says, he says his, his, his daughter Rachel is doing great now. She's 47 years old now. Wow.